Hi, I'm Lara and this is Trip Train Trilogy and today I'll be discussing how I think Twitter mobs ruin own voices. <laughs> So I recently discovered a Twitter drama that happened this past November because I'm always late to the party and never know when these things are happening. So this drama surrounded the author Tamsin Muir. If I mispronounced it, this is the spelling. Tamsin Muir recently came out with the book Gideon the Ninth, which yes, I will be buying now or at least eventually. Now part of it is because I want to support her after she was attacked. However, another part of it is the book Gideon the Knife sounds awesome and really unique. It's an adult fantasy sci-fi with space necromancers and is said to be really dark and also have snark, which yes, sign me up because I love fantasy and sci-fi, but a lot of them tend to be very tropey and similar. And this sounds nothing like I've read before. So yes, please. Also, after reading the interviews of Tamsin Muir and some of her responses to Goodreads questions, she comes across as super nice and the book does sound really interesting. And you might be thinking she's a lesbian. The book has a lesbian protagonist. That's the own voices issue that I'm going to be discussing. But no, no it is not. Because the drama actually had nothing to do with her book that came out. Now, I will say that looking up the Twitter drama now, the majority of what I found have been people defending the author. And I was only able to find one Twitter thread with people criticizing the author. So overall, I don't know how bad or severe it got. However, this does make me hopeful that people are starting to question Twitter mobs more and realize that they aren't always right because they seem to be wrong more than they are right. And since I didn't see this mob occur at the time and I haven't seen the attacks, I do not know if it was initially started intentionally. And I also don't know what the harassing tweets can Contained. Also, in this video, there will be mentions of topics including sexual assault, pedophilia, and suicide. I won't be going in depth, but it will be mentioned. So prepare yourself or maybe don't watch this. So what exactly was the thing that made people upset at the author Tamsin Muir? It actually had to do with an old fan fiction she wrote long before Gideon the Ninth ever existed. This is what seems to be the original post that brought to light the fan fiction that Tamsin Muir wrote that caused the drama of people going against her. It says, Hey all, so it's come to my attention that censoring name to avoid searches, author linked her old fanfiction account on Tumblr where a friend discovered in 2011 this author wrote underage sex, rape, and pedophilia. Screenshots in the thread. Which, this is true, but there's a difference with writing about darker topics to explore them in a serious manner versus thinking they're a good thing. And I feel like the original post did take screenshots from the story out of context and say that the author was promoting it. However, the author, I will add, properly tagged the content to warn people. So the Twitter thread I found were people criticizing this old fan fiction and how their opinions of the author changed because of it. And I'm going to read these to you to give the perspective of their side of this story. These are some tweets by one of the women in the thread. From these tweets, the two women she's talking about is that she's defending the person who brought this fan fiction to light and criticizing the author for making her fan fiction. This, everyone has the right to know of these kind of things about people who you're considering to give your money. The way she addressed it in the thread was in no way aggressive or a cry for a witch hunt. She wanted everyone who cares about these things to know so that they don't support someone they don't agree with simply because they did not know Pedophilia and rape are crimes and making it a kink is something which upsets so many for a good reason. And that she tried to at least inform others of who and thus which ideas, concepts, views they would support is no cry for hate or such, but just information, facts. I bought the book before the threat. Afterwards, I was kind of sad I gave it my money because people close to me were victims of rape and pedophilia and it just makes me sick if people support it. Still wanted to read the book in one way, but I was glad I was informed. I have mixed feelings about this tweet. You don't have to spend your money for anyone you don't want to. And if someone actually was a pedophile, I would not want to give them my money. And I wouldn't want to buy their books. And I agree, you don't have to support any book or author you don't want to. However, I do disagree with making assumptions about the author's character based on what they wrote in a fiction story. Also, I will say, though I am against people attacking authors, I don't think it's fine to go off and attack the person who originally pointed out this fan fiction. 
which apparently happened based on this woman's tweet. While I've been tweeting about mental health and survivors, I didn't want to directly comment on the Tamsin Mrier and pedophilia thing, but one, a QPOC was forced to lock their account because of targeted harassment, Two, there have been attempts to hack into our, their accounts. And as someone against Twitter mobs, it's not okay to attack either party in this situation. And some say the original poster was just trying to inform people, whereas others were saying she is purposely trying to start a smear campaign against the author. And sometimes it's hard to form an opinion on someone's motives when all you have is a post. And to be honest, I don't think bringing up the fanfic in itself is bad. It's put publicly on the internet, making it public information. What was the terrible fanfic about? Because it did mention rape and pedophilia. So yeah. It did have a lot of dark topics in it. And according to people on Twitter who heard about this fanfic and judged it, this is what they had to say. The author wrote a fanfiction that involved a ship of an adult with a minor. A ship of an adult with a minor is a very forgiving way of saying graphic depictions of an adult character raping a minor and framing it as porn because the author admittedly finds it hot. So yes, it does sound like a genuinely disturbing piece of fanfiction. But the assumption that this fanfiction was written by the author with the intention of making it porn because the author finds raping underage kids hot is where I start to question the posters and want evidence because making assumptions about the author's character based on fiction is not something I'm a fan of. The opposing interpretation I saw of the drama from the perspective of someone who supports Tamsin Muir is this tweet. She, someone found an old revenge fic she'd written in which a teen girl is raped, then later finds her rapist and kills him. The blogger selectively pulled the passages about the rape and accused Mir of being a pedophile. I do think the accusations against Mir were unnecessary, and I think taking lines from any story out of context can always be used against an author. Because the thing is, so many stories have antagonists, and if you take when the antagonist shows his perspective in a story and use that to show that the author supports it, that is very disingenuous. And I think as readers, we should try not to do that. So what did the author Tamsin Muir have to say about this controversy? All the quotes I am taking from her are from an interview she had with Three Crows magazine. I definitely will link that below and you should check it out because she talks about a lot more stuff than this controversy and it's very interesting. So since we know how outsiders interpreted the fan fiction, let's see what Tamsin Muir has to say about why she wrote it and what she wrote. I raised comment because I wrote a fanfic where a 13 year old girl is groomed and sexually abused. I should have tried to rewrite it and flog it. The rapist is the POV protagonist. He explicitly and with intent grooms and abuses his quarry, which is perhaps a little heavy for his source material where the running joke is that we don't know where a pumpkin is. The source ends with him being murdered by his teenage clone in revenge. She then says, it's a nasty story. The end revenge is at best pirate and it is certainly not the girl's revenge. The title is taken from Lolita from the final couplet of Humbert Humbert's wanted poem and I shall be dumped where the weed decays and the rest is rust and stardust. So yes, according to this author, this fan fiction is nasty and from the POV of the rapist. And to be honest, based on where Mir posted it, it isn't surprising that people interpreted it the way they did. In her words, the story was written because someone had requested age gap kink. I put it up on AO3 rated E for explicit. You have to click a little box that says you are not under 18 when you try to read it. It is also tagged as child abuse, rape, and underage. I apologize to the in the author's note for writing a darker story than the requested by the requester. So to sum it up, someone requested an age gap kink story, which got Mirror thinking of a tragic story from the assaulter's perspective that she intended to be a darker and serious story, but still she did post it beneath the kink thread. And to be honest, I'm not surprised people interpreted this negatively and assumed Muir had a kink for this. One thing Muir points out is how she has had multiple professionally published short stories in magazines that deal with sexual abuse, whether 
directly or in the form of a metaphor. And that people never accused her of being having a kink for pedophilia because of those stories. Because people assume fanfic is always porn. Which I do think fanfiction has that reputation and I don't think we should always assume fan fiction is someone's fantasy. The author's note says, made in response to a request for romantic fairy slash dual scar on the kink meme, proving that when asked to make a story to a brief, I will always seize the worst possible tangent. Trigger warnings pertinent, not remotely in the spirit of the request, but thanks to the OP for being hell of a good sport. Based on this author's note, it, with her saying that it was not in the spirit of the request, it does give me the impression she doesn't think it's kinky. And also, reading parts of it that I was able to find, it doesn't give me the impression it's supposed to be kinky. It gives me the impression that it's inspired, as she mentioned with the title, by Lolita, by writing a very dark story from the perspective of the bad person, which I understand why people would be uncomfortable by this and upset but I do not get the impression that the author supports it. This book, this story sounds like it was intentionally uncomfortable and disturbing, which I do think there is a place for stories that are intentionally uncomfortable and disturbing. I don't think it was right for people to assume things about her character. And I don't think just because an author writes the darker aspects of humanity means they support it. And I do think that this tendency of assuming people support or fetishize something because they write about it gets in the way of artists being allowed to explore these darker topics. I think it's perfectly reasonable to say this fan fiction was terrible, it's gross, I feel like it fetishized it because even that, if that wasn't the intent, someone could read it and get that. But I do think that there should be a line between criticizing the art and assuming things about the artist. Because if you do that every time there's a darker story, that's going to make writers afraid to discuss these darker topics. And literature will become something meant to placate the public instead of making us think, which is a shame. But the thing is, when people read this, they called her a pedophile and someone who was into this, which at the end of the day is a very serious accusation. And if you're wrong about that, you might have just ruined an innocent person's life. So you better know what you're talking about. And again, I do think people saying they didn't like the story and even saying that they thought the fan fiction wrote it in a kind of way that seemed like it was trying to be a kink instead of saying it was bad is fine because just because an author intends something doesn't mean that it comes across that way and criticizing how it comes across or how it's written is perfectly fine. It's an honest review. I give honest reviews all the time. But, uh, however, I do draw a line about making assumptions of the author when I'm making a public review. But what exactly does this have to do with own voices? Well, this is what Tamsin Muir went on to say in the interview. It's not the first time I've been accused of being a pedophile. I grew up gay in the 90s. Homosexuality and pedophilia were enmeshed in society's minds. When I came out, I got told that I shouldn't be around children. I was used to that because it was common discourse and it hurt uh, like all hell, but it didn't shock me. When I got called a pedophile by Twitter, I got clothesline. My support network had to get in pronto. I was very ready to have a hot date with a length of rope, a date I have arranged and canceled multiple times over my life. I have had lots and lots of therapy over the years for various conditions, some of them lifelong and some not. But when that Twitter callout happened, it was hard to want to live. I thought I knew so intimately what I was doing with my fiction. My therapist was always so supportive of me writing about it. I have not been open about being a childhood sexual assault survivor because again, I grew up in the 90s. Lesbian and childhood sexual assault survivor is just a carte blanche so a whole queue of people can tell you, I hope one day with love and support, you can be straight. It was like right this way to the invalidation booth. I didn't even tell most of my girlfriends. I told one. It's not a topic of discussion between me and my family. I'm relying on them not reading these my interviews so it can remain where it belongs. Thoroughly undiscussed. So, Twitter accused a childhood sexual assault survivor of being a pedophile based on the fan fiction she wrote to cope with her trauma. Until she felt suicidal and was pushed to the point to out herself. That's really bad. And this is my problem with Twitter mobs. And one of my biggest problems with how Twitter mobs ruin own voices. My fear with taking own voices too far is when a book deals with sexuality, mental or physical illness, disability, trauma, and the author is actually own voices, 
but they don't want to disclose that to the entirety of the world. But my point is, because Twitter has this mentality where I feel like they cross from supporting own voices to thinking they are the only voices, they silence people who want to write about their own experiences, but don't want everyone to know that it actually is their own experiences. And when these authors use their writing to explore their own experiences, but don't write about it in the approved way, Twitter ends up harassing them until they are forced to out themselves to the world. Because at the end of the day, you do not know if a book is not own voices unless the author explicitly says it is not. And you do not know if an author is writing a book as a way to cope with their experiences. Because there is a chance that they are. I feel like this also happened with Veronica Roth and her book Carve the Mar. She wrote a character with chronic pain and ended up getting completely trashed by the internet. Now there were other things that people were upset about in the book but they aren't relevant to the own voices discussion and they ended up trashing her until she finally admitted to the world that she does suffer from chronic pain because initially she just said that she had friends who dealt with it but the moment she says that she actually has chronic pain the way she discusses it is a-okay because beforehand the way she discussed it was unacceptable because some people on the internet found it didn't reflect their personal ways they dealt with chronic pain but even though she said that she knew people who dealt with it in this way, it's not acceptable until, oh, no way, she actually has it. Then she can explore the ways that don't reflect every other person on the internet. Two tweets people said about it were, Veronica Roth being ableist and fetishistic about chronic pain makes sense in context of her work, I think. So basically, Veronica Roth decided to steal her friend's experiences with chronic pain and make money off them. The thing is, if someone, anyone on earth, deals with chronic pain in a certain way, representing this person is just as valuable, as important as representing the other people's experience. Don't they deserve their story to be told just as much as everyone else? And wouldn't it be just as possible for someone without chronic pain to write about that experience as they would write about someone else's experience? Because if Rowling Carroll said that she wrote it based on what her friends said, it gives me an impression that she actually talked to them about it. So if she talked to them about it and then wrote the book, I would think they would tell her if she asked them if it's accurate or not. So why is her reflecting her friend's experience less valid than reflecting the experiences of people upset on Twitter? Veronica Roth's way of dealing with chronic pain is just as valid as everyone else's. And if someone bases a book off their friend's experiences, it might not be own voices, but is clearly written in a place of compassion and empathy. And it isn't meant to be offensive. But the truth is, life is offensive. And how people deal with their individual problems and traumas and struggles tends to be offensive. And there's no perfectly politically correct way that works for everyone when it comes to dealing with their own struggles, trauma, and everything else they have to cope with. And even if there is a politically correct way to depict these struggles and experiences, that doesn't mean that politically correct way would actually work for everyone. And I think that books aren't meant to depict the perfectly approved way. They're de meant to depict individual experiences and overall if each book depicts an individual experience then all the books will end up depicting many experiences instead of just one and every experience deserves to be told and i find it disheartening that someone interprets an author writing about an experience they don't have is stealing someone else's experience to make money off of them most successful books by far do not have a protagonist with chronic pain Veronica Roth was already a famous author. She didn't need to write about chronic pain to become famous and make money. And I highly doubt she needs to steal her friend's experiences to make money. And if anything, wanting to write a story about someone else's experience shows that you empathize with them and think they are worthy of being a protagonist just as much as people without chronic pain. The truth is, Own Voices is a great way to shout out authors who write about certain experiences that they have. And as someone who likes to learn, own voices seems to be a good start for if I want to learn about that experience. Get the information straight from someone who actually experiences it. Now, I don't think if someone writes a book about experience they don't have that automatically makes it inaccurate and less valuable as a story. And 
Also, own voices doesn't necessarily mean it's well written because it could just be a wish fulfillment story. But at the end of the day, if I'm picking books and I know one is own voices and one isn't and I want to learn specifically about the experience, the own voices one makes sense to pick up. And I think it's great to promote that authors are writing their own voices. My issue is when people treat own voices like the only voices that can speak about a topic. And adding to that, some people think there's only one way to discuss a certain topic or to view a certain topic, which has resulted in Twitter mobs attacking authors who don't explicitly say they are own voices for not writing about a given topic in the correct way. And the truth is, there isn't a correct way. Because apparently how Veronica Roth wrote Chronic Pain wasn't the correct way, even though she and a couple other YouTubers with Chronic Pain actually said, yeah, I can relate to this, apparently their experiences aren't as valid as the people upset. And it's not that she should feel ashamed about having chronic pain, but she didn't want to tell everyone. And it is none of your business if she has it or not. Just as it was the none of the public's business about uh, the author Tazan Muir. There is an infinite amount of human experiences that can overlap and an even more infinite way people have lived with these experiences. But when some authors write about certain experiences in a way that doesn't reflect that individual reader's experience, it's considered incorrect correct and the author's character comes into question. But when you start attacking people's character because of their art, that is when art dies. This is when you make people too scared to explore certain topics. You make people not want to write protagonists with chronic pain. And authors will end up just trying to write what won't get them in trouble. Because the truth is, a lot of these own voices categories, not all of them, but something such as chronic pain, there is more people without chronic pain than with chronic pain. And not everyone with chronic pain wants to write a book. But if someone without it genuinely wants to explore the topic and write it, then they should because someone might actually relate to that story. And if an author tries to write an experience that they don't have with sincerity, if anything, even if the story isn't good, it builds empathy for the author from having to put themselves in another person's shoes. And the fact that some people assume that writing about a different experience is you trying to profit off them and not you trying to understand them and empathize them is a shame. And if they end up writing a bad book, feel free to give it a bad review so you don't like how it's depicted, but draw the line at demonizing and attacking the author. Because usually if someone writes about a topic, it's because they care. And as Tamsin Muir said, it's also not as easy as if you're writing from a place of personal damage, maybe, you get to write this. People have written brilliantly about personal damages they have not suffered. People have personal damage they don't can't or won't disclose. Living cheek by jowl with rape culture and teen sexualization and total dismissal of teen girls, period, is more than enough of an excuse to write about sexual abuse one has not suffered physically but has arguably suffered spiritually. There are no lines that should not be crossed. There is nothing that should not be written about. This is not to say that all art with a capital A is beyond critique, but all works, whether fan fiction or professionally published, need to be taken by on by a case-by-case -case basis. There can be no bright lines, not even with abhorrent words or concepts. Only allowing authors to write about their own experiences denies a huge aspect of the human experience, and that is empathy. And I believe to my core that people should be able to tell the story they want to, whether it is based on their own or something that they want to explore because they care about people who have had that experience. And when people demonize authors for writing about experience in a certain way, that acts as if there's only one way to experience it. Before anyone is any categorization, they are an individual. And instead of focusing on if a character represents the approved way of dealing with any given experience, Think about if they actually feel like a real fleshed out human being and if someone with that experience could feel that way. But if most people say it doesn't, but a couple people say it does, that doesn't mean the author didn't research any less. That means the author was reflecting that other experience. And if most people experience something in a certain way, but some actually agree with how the story reflects it, that makes it just as valid. And if you genuinely hate a story's depiction of something, feel free to give it a terrible review and one star it. But draw the line at accusing the author of believing things that you don't know. Because that is how you make writers too afraid to explore these darker topics, topics that still deserve to be explored and not just pushed under the rug. And if you do that, 
hopefully you won't end up forcing people to out themselves because in conclusion people's attack of Tamsin Muir was it was unnecessary accusing her of these things and harassing her in a Twitter mob because of her story was not acceptable and it was poor behavior and you forced her to out herself just as people attacking Veronica Roth's depiction of chronic pain forced her to out herself and by harassing these authors you are hurting them and it wasn't acceptable to accuse authors of things and harass them until they feel forced to out themselves just draw the line between critiquing the story and attacking the author for writing it and do not cross it also don't create twitter mobs or join twitter mobs and generally if you're gonna critique the work of an author Twitter is not the best place to do it because it probably will start a mob. Because I feel like the Twitter mob mentality of only voices silences people who actually have had those experiences and forces actual own voices authors to out themselves about things that was none of your business. And again, they deny the human experience of empathy. Anyway though, that's my perspective on own voices and Twitter mobs. Please tell me yours down below. You can agree, disagree with me everything and i will gladly talk to you about it and again thank you for watching and i'll see you later